When the game is on the line, 9 times out of 10, you could expect the OKC Thunder to put the ball in the hands of Shea Gilgis Alexander. But despite Shea being a 31 point per game scorer and a top MVP contender, he's not the player leading OKC in terms of scoring in the fourth quarter this season. And it's not rookie Chad Holmgren either, who's been torching defenses with a solid stroke off the pick and pop and a strong face up game. Instead, the player who scored the most points for the Thunder during fourth quarters this season has been second year wing Jalen Williams or J Dub. Well, consider this. This season, only 8 players have scored more 4th quarter points than J-Dub. 4 of them are MVPs in Giannis, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and LeBron James, while the other 4 are all NBA talents such as De'Aaron Fox, Trey Young, DeMar DeRozan, and Luka Doncic. Then there's Jalen Williams right below them. Overall, the 6'5 second-year wing has been at his best during clutch time, which the NBA defines as situations in which the score is within 5 points during the final 5 minutes of games. In fact, in those situations, J-Dub is shooting a scorching 66.7% from the field, which is the best shooting percentage among all players with at least 25 shot attempts in the clutch this season. But what's even crazier is that J-Dub's overall raw numbers also point to him having a Lead production for someone his age. As before this season, only 4 players aged 22 or younger have averaged at least 19 4 and 4 while making at least half of their shots in a single season. And these guys are Kareem, Michael Jordan, Kevin Johnson, and most recently Giannis Antetokounmpo. But J Dub is currently on pace to become the fifth player on that list as he's currently averaging 19 points, 4 rebounds, and 4.5 and assists while shooting almost 54% from the field. But aside from that, a handful of all in one advanced metrics, including the estimated plus minus rating, the Bucks plus minus rating, and the player efficiency rating or PER, also pegs J Dub as somewhere between a top 30 to top 50 player in just his second season, which puts him into a kind of trajectory that lands him into at least future all star territory. Well, sure, there's no guarantee that J Dub's game will keep rising or that he'll grow into an all NBA type of player. But still, combining the film together with all those numbers he's put up as a 22 year old strongly suggests that he will. So, what's good, everyone? It's Real Balls here, and today, let's dive into the scary ceiling of Jalen Williams and why he could actually develop into potentially the most overqualified second option in the entire NBA. Let's get to it. The OKC Thunder's offense with all the inverted screening actions and guard-to-guard -guard pick and rolls they deploy is designed to spread opponents out on the floor to open up driving lanes for the Thunder's playmakers. It's a system built to maximize the driving game of SGA who leads the NBA in drives for the fourth straight season as well as this OKC team as a whole who leads the NBA in drives by a pretty wide margin. But as defenses start to throw more aggressive coverages on the Thunder, coach Mark Dagnall has sought out different options to counter opponents locking in and trying to slow down Shea Gilgis Alexander's driving attack. Luckily for OKC, they have a really strong second option in Jalen Williams, a walking off-speed attacker who's comfortable moving at his own pace with the ball while using his handle to lull defenders to sleep before he hits the pedal on his way to the basket. This season, J-Dub has completely been looking like a light version of Shea on the floor, as he currently ranks 25th in the NBA both in drives per game and in points scored off drives per game, all while shooting almost 56% on off-the-dribble shots in the paint and 69% in the restricted area, both of which are really strong marks for a sub 6 foot 6 wing like him. Once J-Dub gains that first step on his drive, he's got the frame to hold off defenders, the handle to maneuver through tight spaces, the strength to go up against contact, and the to finish right at the rim. In this possession, you can see J-Dub 1-1 one one against Jamal Murray but Shea approaches with a ghost screen enabling J-Dub to start his driving attack. Now entering the paint, you can see how Denver tries to make life hard for him by surrounding him with 4 defenders but just watch J-Dub take off, go for some hang time and absorb contact from 2 defenders as he finishes the shot off the glass. Then in this play, you can see Shea driving and collapsing the defense in the paint leaving J-Dub open as a kick out option in the corner. J-Dub exposes the lazy closeout by Zion Williamson however Valanchunas is waiting on the paint. Still, J-Dub just goes straight up and contorts his body as he finishes the tough end one against contact. Also, the beauty about J-Dub's game is that even if help defenders or shot blockers try to stop him on his tracks, he can easily deploy his ridiculous 7'2 wingspan which affords him more release angles on shots near the basket. 
In this possession, you can see J-Dub on the wing being guarded by a solid lengthy defender in Keita Bates Diop. Chet Holmgren sets him up on the handoff, giving J-Dub some advantage against his man. Bates Diop initially cuts him off, but watch J-Dub with a change of pace which gives him an open lane before he uses his length on this tough left-handed finish. Then again here with J-Dub on the ball, you can see another screen from Shea which triggers J-Dub to get switched on the slower Nick Claxton. He's facing a much bigger player along the baseline but watch him smartly use a shoulder fake before he pivots and uses that 7 foot 2 wingspan as he finishes the semi hook against his big defender. But the good thing is, even when the lane is much more crowded than usual, J-Dub actually has a plan B which often comes in the form of his pull up jumper, which is a product of combined brute force, polished footwork and a solid touch from the perimeter. When his driving lane is cut off, J-Dub comfortably lowers his shoulder and dislodges his defender to create space before rising up for a tough mid-range jumper, which he has collectively drained at a really high clip this season. As J-Dub is currently shooting a scorching 56.6% .6 on pull-up 2-point jump shots and just under 50% overall from the mid-range. And it's worth noting that there are only 8 players who have both made more mid-range shots and who have shot those attempts at a higher clip than J-Dub this season. And the list includes some of the best mid-range scorers in the entire NBA with Kevin Durant, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Joel Embiid, Donovan Mitchell, Chris Middleton, Michael Porter Jr., Brandon Miller, and Tyrese Halliburton. Plus, watching the film, you could definitely see that the skill and shot difficulty level that J-Dub employs to create his mid-range shots are easily at par with those aforementioned players. In this play in early possession, you can see J-Dub immediately attacking the defense of Kevin Herter. After losing Herter with a smooth behind the back, he's seemingly out of options in the middle of Sacramento zone. But watch him leverage that tight space together with his length to launch the smooth one-legged fadeaway against the tight contest. Then in this play, once again, you see Chad Holmgren setting up J-Dub on a side pick and roll play which triggers the switch on the slower Marvin Bagley. J-Dub tries to cross him up and while Bagley is able to hold up, J-Dub continues with a turnaround move which sets up the high arcing mid-range shot, which Bagley defends quite well but goes in anyway. Overall, the downhill attacking and the stop and pop mid-range game already makes J-Dub a really tough cover for defenses. But what's even crazier is that he's also experiencing a deep shooting stroke development that has seen J-Dub go from shooting 35% from the 3-point line as a rookie to now shooting an insane 44.6% from deep, which is the 4th best mark in the entire NBA this season, with nearly equal accuracy off the dribble and off the catch. Combine all of that with his steady playmaking ability and decision making with the ball that has enabled him to produce a 2.66 assist to turnover ratio this season which is also the 20th best in the entire league and it becomes quite clear that Jalen Williams is indeed a total problem for opposing defenses. However, what helps make J-Dub a much bigger part of OKC's identity is how he also neatly fits with what coach Dagnall is trying to accomplish on the other end of the floor. J-Dub is a smart defender who's got quick hands, who's posting solid shot blocking and steal rates for a wing, and who's averaging the 14th most deflections per game in the entire NBA this season. He's quick enough to navigate screens and to stick with ball handlers, while also being able to track players away from the ball, while also being a suffocating defender from the point of attack. And while J Dub doesn't have to take the heaviest defensive assignments every single night, which is of course a benefit of playing for a top 5 defensive team with a ton of multi-positional defensive stoppers like OKC. This doesn't mean that J Dub has it easy on defense. Because of the fact that he plays power forward in the Thunder starting lineup and the fact that he frequently plays with a frail big man in Chad Holmgren, J Dub is still mostly asked to switch and battle much bigger players. Case in point, this season, his three most frequent defensive assignments in terms of matchup minutes have been much bigger guys in Carl Anthony Towns, Jeremy Grant, and yes, Victor Wembanyama. But interestingly enough, when J-Dub has guarded them, no one has shot better than 46% from the field. But of course, as part of an ideal OKC roster, you wouldn't want J-Dub to consistently be guarding bigs because at the end of the day, he's still definitely at his best when defending guards or wings. In fact, watching him, you can see how he's been able to make life uncomfortable even for bigger and stronger forwards who try to outmuscle him. In this possession, you can see J-Dub initially defending Draymond Green on the post before Kaminga is actually switched onto him. And you can see how J-Dub's wide frame comes into play as he contains his man. Kaminga tries to overpower him on the paint, but just watch J-Dub stifle him with a block. 
Then here, j Dub starts the possession, guarding Kawhi Leonard off the ball. The pin down screen from Paul George slightly frees up Kawhi, but you can see j Dub fight through the screen and continue to trail his man on the paint. Kawhi tries to use his shoulder to back j Dub down, but j Dub smartly uses his hands to send the ball out of bounds. Well, there definitely aren't a lot of players in the NBA right now like j Dub, who averages 30 plus minutes per game, who can be great offensively in many different roles, but who can also be a net positive defender at the same time. But what's even crazy Easier is that, J-Dub also gives OKC the luxury of having a 22-year-old guy who produces all-star level numbers as their number 2 option, which is most evident during the start of the second and fourth quarters, which is when Shea takes a breather on the bench. Cause looking at it, when Shea is off the floor, J-Dub is averaging a ridiculous 34.6 points and 8.3 assists per 100 possessions while posting an insane 61.3 true shooting percentage, which are basically numbers that we only see from MVPs and all NBA type players over the course of a full season. Which just makes you wonder, what could J-Dub's numbers actually look like if he had the keys to a team full time? But whether or not he actually outgrows his projections as OKC's long term number 2 option or even potential number 3 option, the good thing is, J-Dub won't be extension eligible until the summer of 2025, meaning GM Sam Presti still has time left to fix his balance sheet in order to keep all this talent in Oklahoma City for the foreseeable future. But for now, I think it's becoming quite clear that if this iteration of the Thunder is going to surpass what those OKC teams from the Big 3 era have accomplished, it's not just because SGA has become the best guard in the NBA, or Chad Holmgren has evolved into the monster two-way unicorn that everyone expected him to become. But it's also going to be because of the fact that a couple of drafts ago, Sam Presti was able to identify a potential star and a huge two-way difference maker in Jalen Williams when not a lot of lottery teams were able to. But what do you guys think? Do you actually see Jalen Williams evolving into the most overqualified number two option in the entire NBA in the near future? Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And again, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as well. Again, this has been Rero Balls, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.